If I pull this off, it will be my preview and uh, questions, keys to the game for Kansas State. It'll also be a minor miracle. Uh, I'm working on very little sleep, a great deal of stress, and a depression with enough facets to be a disco ball. Meanwhile, this is still Gen 4, or <laughs> this is still WVU football going deep. I am Forrest Poston, and uh, we'll start with the offense. Not surprisingly, first question there is Brandon Yates. Uh, we don't really know how his hand is doing. Don't know what adjustments they may have tried to make during last week's game. What they're doing this week, I assume they are keeping track of how it is healing, uh, possibly experimenting with how they tape it, and <laughs> practicing snaps a lot. Uh, I assume they fully expect uh, Yates to start. That was not mentioned in uh, you know Monday's game. I mean, nothing about him being questionable. But of course, that can change. They not only have this week to prepare, but last week's game uh, as <laughs> an example of what can happen, whether they expect it to or not. So I don't know if that makes it any more likely that they will use Livingston, but that is a question. You know, will Yates snap well? Will he block well? He did not block well against Iowa State, which was probably in part because he was getting increasingly worried about the snaps. Weren't we all? Uh, another question is, which Garrett Green will we see? Uh, you know, I mean, will we see the one who <laughs> passes well and runs when he should? Uh, that is, that's the complete Garrett Green. Uh, we didn't, I mean, last week, he didn't run sometimes that he should, and sometimes he didn't pass well. He starts to push. Uh, the work they did over the summer made it possible for him to throw some passes that he couldn't throw before. And it seems like he is still kind of learning what he can and can't get away with. One of the interceptions last week was an attempt to throw a particularly difficult pass over one player and in front of another. Um, it's possible to throw that pass, and Green himself probably can, but there's you know, just because you can doesn't mean you should. And it was not the time and place to take that particular chance. Uh, you know, he's what now, 23? Man, yeah, old man, right? <laughs> so he's still learning. I mean, he's, he's really about a year behind where you'd ideally like a college quarterback to be. He has been, I mean, he was probably two years behind when he came in. Uh, it's part of why it took him so long to be ready. Um, but yeah, just sucks that things have not fallen into place. I've said that time and again. But the ability to drop back and throw from the pocket is there. People who keep saying, oh, you know, they're making him what he's not. No, for one thing, they're not making him anything. It's his decision process. Um, based on his new abilities to throw good passes, short and intermediate, touch passes, the layups, that kind of thing. Uh, so, I mean, that's to the positive. And actually, will he hit the long pass? Last year, he hit the long pass at a close to 50% rate, or around 50%. Uh, this year, I, maybe 30%. Um, now they only tried one long pass that I recall against Iowa State. That was looked like a post route to Ray. 
and he was <laughs> very open. The pass was beautiful, and the Iowa State player held Ray because that was the way to prevent a touchdown. Yeah. Part of me says we should change it so that particular penalty automatically you know, either puts the ball on the one or is an automatic touchdown. Uh, the idea of committing a penalty to prevent a touchdown kind of irks me. It's a smart play under the rules. I just... Yeah, and of course you could never enforce that kind of a rule change. You know, it's it's absurd. I just wish we could do it. Um, my wishes have rarely been known to affect the universe. That is, of course, something of a different story. You can find that one on one of my other channels. Um, now, obviously, the running game is a question. Uh, the backs didn't really get. A lot of opportunities last week. Um, and all of those opportunities ended up being, you know, hit at the line of scrimmage or in the backfield. So what yardage they gained was hard earned. Um, Going to have to be better and sharper. That's that's simply all there is to it. Uh, the offensive line graded out the worst they have since Penn State. Uh, we can't have that again. They've got to do better. And, I mean, especially, you know, Remack graded badly. And he's the second best lineman. Uh, Malone, third best, he graded badly. And then we went downhill from there. Um, but uh, defense... Hey, I forgot to say this during the video, so I'll cut it in now. Uh, please, it you know really will help if you uh, share, subscribe, click thumbs up, click make comments, click notification bell, tell your friends. I'm kind of stuck needing them right now 61 subscribers to get to the critical 500 mark. And uh, I mean, folks, I I just I need it. I gotta have it. Uh, I'm at the point financially. Where I may, if if I cannot make progress on the subscribers in the next two weeks, I may have to stop doing this and put my energy into something. <laughs> well, something that's not currently making money, but I might be able to get it there if I concentrate on it. And right now, I don't have the energy to do several things at once. So that's kind of where it stands. I need your help. I want to keep doing these videos. I enjoy these videos. But, and I hate to say financial realities have to be considered, but they do. Anyway, watch the rest of the video. Thanks. Now, defense actually revolves mostly around injury questions and some of which I mentioned in the previous video. Of course, yeah, Yates is an injury question. Uh, Burks, how much will he be able to play? Will he be getting more up to his expected level? When he's not playing, uh, Carrico and Tarnu will be filling in. We're not hearing their name a lot, I mean, that means they're not making big plays. Maybe it means they're not making really bad plays. Uh, but <laughs> I'm not hearing names called a lot. Of course, the announcers really aren't good about calling names on plays anymore anyway. Um, I keep seeing so-and-so made six, seven tackles, whatever, and it's just like they did. <laughs> Boy, I watched the game and I didn't know that because I never, you know, they never said, hey, tackle by so-and-so. Anyway, um, we also have Crandall was out. I don't know if he'll be back uh, this, you know, for this game. Uh, the, the corners overall didn't play badly last week. 
they are tackled. <laughs> the corners have tackled well most of the season. Had a couple of off games, but most of the season they've tackled well. But coverage issues. Last week, you know, there were a couple of big passes, a communication problem. Uh, but coverage was overall pretty good. If they can tighten it half step, a half step and more aggressive on the hit. That's what I want to see from the defensive backs. Uh, now, Anthony Wilson has been good on hits. You know, he's, he's <laughs> unfortunately, you know, the receivers have still held on to the ball even when it was a good hit. But we've got to do more of that. I mean, we did have a really good play, and I forget whether it was, I might have been, I think it was Hollis, you know, just that good play where you reach around, get your hand on the ball, and knock it away. Uh, it was a classic play. Need to see more of those. I mean, we are seeing more of those. We're getting closer and closer. They say we're, we're a half step away. Tighten that up, big difference. Now, of course, question of how the defense handles Avery. More speed than we've seen. Um, you know, and <laughs> we, you know, injury wise, Jackson may not play. If he plays, we don't know. You know how quick he's going to be. How much? How much of Jackson will will there be? Um, and how many plays can he go? If he's not playing, uh, well, either way, we're likely to see more of Gabriel and Kinsler. And I think you know sometimes I think they've moved Hammond to the outside, Gabriel in the middle. Uh, and work that way. It has worked, but Gabriel and Kinsler are freshmen, true freshmen, uh, which means their strength isn't quite up where it needs to be, <coughs> better than most freshmen, but not where it needs to be for Big 12 play. And they don't have the experience. They're going to make more mistakes. And a foot either way can be a big mistake. I mean, when we talk about these guys, you know, making mistakes, we're not talking about a big difference. Well, a big difference. A small mistake, a foot this way, a step that way, makes a massive difference in the result of a play. Um, I mean, either just because you're not in the gap or because you give the offensive blocker leverage. <coughs> um, but, I mean, between Burks and Jackson, we've got a lot of potential for problems. Now, we've got a lot of potential for good things to happen. Uh, Carrico and Tarnu now do have some experience at Spear, uh, so that should help. They should be able to play faster, diagnose things better. Um, Gabriel has played a fair number of snaps. snaps. Kinsler, less, but he has played. So we're not just dipping into brand new players, but dang it. Yeah, I mean, we're looking at McIntyre, Vesterinen, and now Jackson off of the defensive line. We are at the point where it really matters. Losing McIntyre hurt, losing Vesterinen hurt, but we had guys behind them with experience and lots of talent. Now we're down to the guys with talent not the experience and not enough time in the weight room. So 
Uh, let's hope we don't lose anybody else. And let's hope Jackson is able to go uh, at least, you know, 20 snaps or so. And if the offense plays well, 20 snaps could be a third of the game. Quick look at special teams. Uh, you're not seeing a whole lot of big punt returns because punters are getting so dang good. Uh, hang time and all of that. You know, you're seeing so many fair catches. Uh, but we did have a good punt return from Ray last week. Uh, it's not something that got a lot of talk because <laughs> there were so many bad plays and we lost. If there had been bad plays and we won, you'd still be hearing about Ray's kickoff return. Now, it, it was about a 34-yard return or so late in the game. He took it a yard or two deep in the end zone, and he cut and run, cut and ran. <laughs> um, and that's, I mean, a kickoff returner, they do just have to go. Ray's been, I think, a little hesitant, went for it more, and that could you know, bode well. I would, you know. Now, again, you know, we don't see that many kickoff returns. Uh, and I don't think the league wants to reduce the number of touchbacks because the injury rate is high on kickoff and kickoff returns. Uh, but touchbacks are so blasted boring. And I don't want to see what they, you know, what they did with the tip-off in basketball, uh, where suddenly it's just change of possession. Uh, you know, I don't want, I don't want it automatically starting on the 25 and the kickoff eliminated. I want to see them adjust it so that we don't get so many dang touchbacks. Um, but anyway. <laughs> Of course, then the kickers just kick it so far up in the air that, you know, the hang time eliminates the return. So, uh, there are some things on all three sides of the ball to be looking for. Injury questions, mistake questions, identity questions. The team has an identity. The offense and the defense has have identities. Garrett Green does not have an identity. That is, you know, that plus his tendency to push too hard at times are, I think, you know, the reason he glitches, you know, plays great, and then, you know, forgets he's a runner, <laughs> something like that. So, game is coming up Saturday night, I believe it's on Fox. Here we go again. I am hoping for a strong, strong game. And I do intend to do a post game uh, as soon after the game as I can. How long it'll be, <laughs> that depends. Now, uh, <laughs> I have kind of rambled and roamed. Like I said, I'm doing this off, you know, top of my head. But I will go ahead and call it a day, and I'll talk to you guys later. So long. Hey, I forgot to say this during the video, so I'll cut it in now. Uh, please, it you know really will help if you uh, share, subscribe, click thumbs up, click make comments, click notification bell, tell your friends. I'm kind of stuck needing them right now 61 subscribers to get to the critical 500 mark, and. Uh, I mean, folks, I, I just, I need it. I got to have it. Uh, I'm at the point financially where I may, if, if I cannot make progress on the subscribers in the next two weeks, I may have to stop doing this and put my energy into something, <laughs> well, something that's not currently making money, but I might be able to get it there if I concentrate on it. Right now, I don't have the energy to do several things at once. So that's kind of where it stands. I need your help. I want to keep doing these videos. I enjoy these videos. But 
and I hate to say financial realities have to be considered, but they do. Anyway, watch the rest of the video. Thanks.